Cheers everybody, the Mad Coffee here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another let's play of and now you see it over there you know, somewhere. Firewatch. I saw it a couple of days ago um, on Steam. It's what I think a little bit pricey, 20, 20 bucks, but uh, uh, the trailer was really interesting. And um, yeah, you play as a guard. Uh, in the canyon and from what I saw you were communicating with a walkie-talkie with uh, some girl and mysterious things will happen in there oh hot ah oh. fire hot <laughs> ow um sorry guys um where's my controller there it is Turn them on. Yeah, I'm using the Xbox 360 wireless controller for PC. And now, oh, got to head into the game, actually. And, yeah, you see, um, I already did uh, some... Yeah, I can't, I could continue, but I did not really do anything. Uh, there were some choices to make, and I don't want to make them without you watching me. So, delete this. Start fresh new. Mm. Sorry, guys. I ate something uh, a couple of minutes ago. Still. Nah, doesn't matter. Hmm. Sounds like a bar. Hope you don't mind if you see the microphone. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. Oh, well, 11 years before I was born. You see Julia. Hello? Do I see her? What do I do? Ah, I have to choose it. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and gra grad students from nearby C CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out, -drinking, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. Ooh. You are drunk. What else? So what's your... What's your, you know, major? You... You pretty... You... You're pretty. Yeah, well, well yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, should we go the cute way? Come on. You, you're pretty, she says coolly. Ah, you, ha, you are pretty. Ah, okay, she corrects me. She knows what I'm saying. No, she sees what I'm saying. You're not. You're a future hangover. Nice. <laughs> what? You reply refused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down the waiter and one week later you're Julia's boyfriend. Nice. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, what? Why is it, uh, ooh tearing apart pick up pick up pick up pick 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 zoom in not zoom in pick up ah all right right trigger shut up watch aha uh -huh. so we're a couple and I picked up a bag uh, about to hit my new job, I guess, as a watcher. Yeah, doesn't, f doesn't fall off. You date for over a year. She drives, she drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a few, or with a few, with a few mountains. No, with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. 
You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Let me get closer to the mic for a better uh, voice. Julia wants it, wants to get a dog. There's a scuffy, undis undersized beagle. Julia is in love. I love beagles. Beagles are cool. Or bagels? What? She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gently-eyed German Shepherd. Mm, don't like them so much. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. <laughs> you add up the Shepherd and name him Mayhem. For destruction and mayhem. No. I'll choose the beagle. And name him Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. Nice. Summer of 79. Uh, 1979, you talk uh, out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 p.m. And the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart. Or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. That would pre that, that that would pretty good. This would well, what did I say? In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that. You say? These kids are going to be screwed it up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. You'll do. Aww. How cute. Oh, so I already picked up my bag. Uh, I don't... I get further away from the mic. I guess there's no cute story anymore. Alright, what do we have here? Oh, sorry guys for the burping. Uh, just five, ten minutes ago that I uh, ate something. Where are we? Two Forks region overview. Oh, that's pretty big. Two Forks lookout. Thoroughfare basin. Ah, whatever. Mm, do not forget to check in. Learn to live with bears. There are bears in here? Okay. No fireworks. I actually never have seen a bear. Oh, it was just dust. Thought I saw something. Um, here in Germany there are not... Let's say any bear that crosses our border is going to be shot. There was some news some years ago. One bear crossed from... Uh, some crossed some borders and was shot because some idiot idiots thought eh, he's threatening our sheep or something like that. Stupid folks. Problem bear. We've called him. Stupid. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. Oh no. She walks in after you've gone to bed. Oh no. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Oh, do I get mad or do I ignore her? I, I personally am totally mad when I'm, uh, uh when I'm, uh, tired. So I always get mad when I'm tired. If you wake me up in the middle of the night, I'm, I'm grumpy, old and... You call her an inconsiderate asshole. Nice. She tells you to fuck yourself and do not to be such uh, and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. Sure, why not? She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Okay. 1981. One year later, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You 
You pose and flex like he, man. <laughs> you frolic like Victoria's Secret model. I flex like he, man. You look awesome. Oh, thanks, game. I do look awesome. With this belt. I don't know. That looks so nice. Interesting style. Something like um, what is it called? It's it's uh, out in the wild, in the wild, um, in the snow. Ah, uh, you you know what I mean. Oh, <laughs> I vanish. My shirt is vanishing in the background there. Two forks, fire lookout. What? Eight miles. Well, space bar to hop over. Uh, I guess that's uh, button A on my controller. Oh, that looks so nice. Did you see the sunbeams from my hand? 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. And that's not nice. Don't do this. Bucket gets kicked. Be ba fuck the dog, Julia Lay yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You beat his goddamn face in! Douche nozzle. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to get... You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Okay... 1984 Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. I don't think it's a good convince her to uh, convince her not to take the job. No, I won't. I I wouldn't do that. If it's if it's a job, yeah. If it's a job that she would love, I would say, come, hey, move there. Do it. Agree if she commutes back and forth. Why am I such a... Is is it something I, 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 I have chosen uh, uh, with, the, with the things? Okay. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do if it... If... Do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up, if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Oh, okay. Long times passed. Oh man, this music is so sad. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave... What? Start over. My English is so fucking bad. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. Okay, she lost it on colle uh, on a col uh, oh on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Okay, she was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to some someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. <sighs> Talking about things is really important. You should always talk to your significant other if you really have problems and discuss it. Really. It solves problems. I can tell. 
Don't make macaroni and drink wine to forget it. Kicks you in the butt afterwards. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. Okay. You both decide to keep a, to keep it a secret for now. Oh god. Oh god. Why am I crying now? Oh god. Oh. Fuck. I didn't know this is getting this emotional. <sighs> Shit. Yeah, I'm 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 a crybaby. I'm a crybaby. Pick up journal. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> oh my fucking god. This is me. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. I'm one year old. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home in permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Fuck it. Come on, do this game. Nineteen eighty-eight. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. Okay, shit man. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility, or you are determined to take care of her by yourself. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry guys, give me a minute. Uh, I'm, I'm, also, so, so, um, if it's, it's just a game, but I know that, but this is so close to the relationship I have to my fiance. It really hurts me. Gosh, that music. I, I take care of, of her myself. It I know you know it 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 should be, be it would be better to to let someone take care of her twenty four hour under surveillance. I uh, oh fuck I made the wrong decision. <sighs> fuck it. A, A. No, it's not a deer. Shh. Come on. It's okay. I won't hurt you. Oh, I knew it. It is impossibly hard. 
The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college ba basketball in the winter. Drinking then too. Oh gosh. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you did it, hmm? the first time you did it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. God no! Ha! <laughs> I no. This really, guys, really, this a chair in front of her bedroom door. Really? Letting her alone is, is, is bad either. She could go away. And you trust that she sleeps like a rock. The other thing is, is, not, is not an option. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time you tell Sheila, the partner, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward for those uh, to those nights. No, come on. Ninety. I don't. I don't want to read. You fucking idiots! These sounds. Nineteen ninety-nine. Nineteen eighty-nine. One night you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a. 10 and are taken to jail for the night. Okay, I don't know what this means. You consider trying to hide, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Okay, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know what a, what it did. What a, oh, 10 is. I don't know what 10 is. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state is, uh, this, the state your house is in. Then they tell Julia, uh, you, Julia is coming to live with them. You don't, you don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Shut up, phone. I didn't say anything, Google. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Okay. Sorry guys for all this emotional stuff here, but it's something <sighs> with 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 those kind of things. It's very hard. It's it's very hard because most of the things uh, are so close to the relationship I have. Um, and music does its work too. It's a oh man, so great soundtrack this far. Man, how long do I... Oh gosh, it's 24 minutes already. It's just the intro. <laughs> so, um... We arrived at our lookout. I went to emotion, uh, through an emotional ho roller coaster ride. Um, sorry for that, guys. And... Um, look out here. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And over there, we've got the thoroughfare lookout. Can I look there closer? Something? Oh yeah, I can zoom in. No one there. Nothing to see here. Um, I will leave you guys here. You didn't see anything, but it's, I will call it the intro. Um, this is episode one, the intro. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you stay with me. Um, sorry <laughs> for the emotional uh, uh, breakdown here, and I uh, hope you will stay with me. As always, share a mug. For steering, we will use WASD and the left mouse button. Apparently, this is everything. Thank you very much for playing the beginner's guide. My yeah. name is Davey Ringgaus. I wrote the Stanley Parable. No and while that game tells I'm a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to a place where there are no shirts. Don't 
What? Oh no, again, the monster will catch me. I must run away. Don't need no gal, I'll spruce up for the spruces. Don't need no pal, I'll change my mood up for the mooses. Headed off to our Shoshone, where the birds and the bees won't know me. Men and war won't exist no more, and there ain't no gals to keep no score. And if you're wondering where's my Aspen, it's been cavorting amongst the Aspens. Don't need no grass, I'll get altered among the alders. Don't need no mass, I'll grovel before the boulders.